Greetings, my brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Bob Barber here, End Time Dream and Vision, the channel that's dedicated to the watch of dreams and visions and how they point to the return of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Welcome back everybody to End Time Dream and Vision. Before we get started, if you need a Bible, don't have access to one, can't afford one, we can help. Email us and say, I need a Bible to support at feedmysheeptoday.org and we'll send you a free Bible, free shipping, anywhere on earth, just for you. And folks, if you love watching videos about dreams and visions, how they pertain to the end times of biblical prophecy and how they lead us to that final event in our lives here, which would be the rapture resurrection event that takes place before the tribulation period, then this is the channel for you because we love posting rapture dreams and other dreams dealing with the end times. So don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any new content that we have coming out. Today, everybody, we're gonna be going over some rapture resurrection dreams. This first one here is from Sam. Sam says, I had walked into a church and I saw my dad, who has been dead now for many years, lying dead on a table in front of the pulpit. I began approaching closer, and then I saw my mom, who has also died some years ago, lying beside my dad. They both died separately at separate times. As I approached closer, they suddenly awoke from the dead. I suddenly woke up. So this is simply a representation of the resurrection event that takes place for everybody who has been saved during the age of grace. You gotta understand some the resurrection event is far bigger than the rapture event. The resurrection event will deal with everybody who has died and got saved through the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel of grace over the last 2000 years globally. Okay, a lot of people just think about the rapture where it just deals with us who are living, changing, and leaving the earth. No, the rapture of the living is kind of like the, um, you know, picking up the final pieces after the major event. Okay, the major event really is the resurrection. All right, and it's funny because all you people out there who are against the rapture, are you against the resurrection too? Because what's coming up is the resurrection event. The rapture is just God's way of tying up any loose ends after the major event, which is us, the living, the remnant on the earth. Because when the resurrection takes place, you're talking about billions of people, all right? But the rapture of the church may only deal with what? Just a billion, maybe, I wouldn't even say a billion, I'd probably say more along the lines of about 500 million people. Because I know the earth consists of 1.3 billion people that claim that they're Christians, but the majority of them are Catholics and they don't really worship Jesus, don't believe in the gospel, grace, they believe in Mary, worshiping Mary, and all that garbage, and saints, and just collectively, all that, not just Jesus, you know, right? They're not focused on Jesus and they don't understand the gospel. So by missing those points, they actually never received the Holy Spirit and you need the Holy Spirit indwelling within you to change you from the inside out at the rapture event, according to Romans chapter eight, verses 10 and 11. The Holy Spirit that indwells within you changes you from the inside out. So if you don't have that Holy Spirit indwelling within you, you will not partake in the rapture resurrection event. And for everybody who has died, if that was not their situation with the indwelling Holy Spirit within them before they died, thus marking their body for the rapture resurrection event, they won't be resurrected. Plain and simple, all right? So at the rapture resurrection, we may see billions of people being resurrected but just a small portion of people being raptured. So you're gonna see this huge resurrection event, and then you're gonna see a small rapture event. 
for those who are left behind on the earth after the dead in Christ have risen. According to 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then we who are alive and remain shall be called up to meet them in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So, awesome dream here. Let's go on to the next one here. This next one is from Edward. Edward goes on to say, I was caring for school children during a trip that we were taking and we encountered a small tornado. We found refuge in a school. After putting the children in a safe place, I investigated the tornado that followed us. When I opened the door, the entire sky was filled with tornadoes. I recognized the one that followed us. I felt like I was supposed to let it take me, so I surrendered to it. As it approached me, it felt like a huge hand wrapped around my waist and then I was lifted up into the sky and then I woke up. So here we're looking at a picture of the rapture. Now these tornadoes that were coming down, I believe just represents all the uh, chaos that's going to be taking place here in the tribulation period. And the children were taken to a safe location. Of course, the children will be raptured at this point. And of course, at this point, he felt like the tornado was supposed to come and get him. Well, the Bible says that the devil, the dragon, will overcome the saints, okay? So the tornado will consume you if you're a saint here during the tribulation period. If you don't get saved right now, fill with the Holy Spirit. So he approached it, and then a hand came down, grabbed him by the waist, and lifted him up into the sky. Of course, this represents him being a believer right now. Right now, you are prepared for the rapture resurrection. But if you come to being a believer in Jesus Christ after the rapture resurrection event, because the age of grace is closed out, where you can no longer be saved by the gospel of grace, but instead you can only be saved by the everlasting gospel, preached by the Revelation 14 angel. If that is you at that point, you missed the rapture, then you are supposed to be consumed by the tribulation period and everything is has to throw at you. Okay, that's why the Bible says he overcomes the saints. Not a good place to be in. I know some people are like, I'm going to fight the Antichrist. Yeah, good luck. But the Bible says that you're supposed to lose. All right. Try reading your Bible, you folks that say stuff like that. Okay. You don't want to fight the Antichrist. The Antichrist is going to railroad you. All right. You don't have a chance against him. Now, folks, before we go any further, please take a moment to check out what we are doing to expand the body of Christ and be effective here on the earth through Feed My Sheep today. And I will be right back after this quick break. Friends, have you been wanting to make a huge impact in God's kingdom, but haven't quite figured out how you're going to do it? And wouldn't you want to make a big impact in a relatively short period of time? I mean, after all, it's not like we have a whole lot of time left. Just look around and see what's happening. And wouldn't it be nice to stand before Jesus at the Bema seat with several books the size of novels before you containing the works that you did while you were here on the earth compared to a diner's menu. Here at Feed My Sheep today, you can build those novels. For the last 10 years, we have been raising funds and funding Christian missions all throughout the world. We've been providing humanitarian relief aid to new believers in hard to reach areas, jungle areas, and third world countries, areas that people have just written off and forgotten about. Not us. We are reaching these areas, providing the help that these people need. And then after showing them the love of Jesus Christ through the aid we provided them, we will show them the love of Jesus that he did specifically for them at the cross through the preaching of the gospel of grace. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. When funds come into this ministry, there is about a three-day turnaround rate, give or take, before it reaches the missionary's hands. And then that money is immediately turned into Bibles and humanitarian relief aid that goes forward to bring in new believers into the body of Christ. We're not building with wood, hay, and stubble like others are with their gigantic sized temple worship centers that will be burned up in the tribulation anyways. No, we are building with precious stones, silver and gold that will be tried by the fire and that will last and will not be consumed. 
because here we are adding hundreds and thousands of people on a daily basis to the body of Christ. Buildings are not eternal, that's wood, hay, and stubble, but spirits are. Gold, silver, precious stones. So which work do you think is more important? Building a temporary physical structure or building the body of Christ? I digress. So if you feel that tug right now to make a difference, please don't ignore it. Just go to our website, feedmysheeptoday.org. There you can give by PayPal, credit card, bank draft, or just simply send your gift in the mail. The address will be there as well. And if you want to make your gift go farther, become an easy feed monthly sustainer. We greatly need more people to join our monthly sustainer family. Look, if we know how much is coming in the next month, this gives us the ability to leverage what we have this month to buy the supplies that we need for next month. Because sometimes we have to order stuff this month and wait for it to arrive the following month. And I think you all understand why that is because of the pandemic and stuff like that. So we greatly need monthly sustainers. So please just consider maybe just $10 a month. If you could do more, praise the Lord. But we're happy to get that $10 because every little bit counts here, everybody. So great in heaven will your rewards be from the work that's achieved here. I promise you that. May God bless you all and thank you so much for your support. Thank you all so, so much for your much needed ongoing support for Feed My Sheep today. Folks, if it wasn't for you, we would not be able to get the things done that we're getting done right now. And there's so much that is getting completed right now. It's hard for me to even keep track of it. All the salvations, all the people who are coming to the Lord, thanks to your generosity and your support. Because these people, they're receiving blankets, they're receiving food and help, and then they receive the message. You know, we don't go into these areas and preach and then say, okay, the ones of you that come to Lord Jesus, you get a blanket, you get food. Okay, we don't do it that way. We come in with help first for everybody, and then we preach the gospel while they are enjoying what we have given them. Okay, so that is how we work here. We show them the love of Jesus Christ, and then we show them the eternal love of Jesus Christ. Okay, it's a great system. It's been working out great for years. And another thing is too, is that you will see incredible rewards at the beam of seat judgment because of your support for Feed My Sheep today and everything that is accomplished here with our work with the missionaries. So a lot of you out there, you would love to get out there and just share the gospel all day long, every day, but you can't. And a lot of people here in this country don't want to hear it. But in third world countries, they do want to hear it. So that is why our numbers are so great. And if you want to partake in that, then please, if the Lord is tugging at your heart right now to make any type of donation, please don't ignore it. He wants to reward you for what will be accomplished through it. So thank you all so, so much for your much needed ongoing support. And may God bless you all. All right, this next dream is from Jill. Jill goes on to say here, I had a dream about a massive tsunami last night, but it happened in a lake. It crossed over a parking lot and slammed into an apartment complex. But after the water receded, there was no more lake. Completely gone, and several cars were parked like nothing happened. There weren't any fish left. It was bone dry at the bottom like the pond never existed. Hmm, interesting. Well, I believe this represents famine. I Me, mean, I can't think of anything else. This represents famine because when the tribulation takes place and everything that's gonna be happening here on the earth with warm wood and everything, you will not be able to drink the water here because it becomes tainted and it will kill you, okay? And of course, the Bible says it kills a third of living things in the waters here on the earth, the fish and all the aquatic life, which means you can't eat that. And of course, she saw a tsunami. A tsunami will be generated when a huge rock from Wormwood hits the water and causes a great tsunami. So that's where your tsunami comes from. So basically, we're looking at collectively the judgment of Wormwood here. So you get a tsunami. And then the waters become bitter where you can't drink them, which is kind of represented here. There's no more water to drink. 
and waters are turning into blood too so what water do you have to drink and what food do you have to eat because all the fish got destroyed and no longer exist here in these waters okay so you have no, nothing to eat which represents famine and nothing to drink which represents wormwood which collectively this all represents the tribulation period imagine if we had a nuclear war do you think the waters would be affected by the nuclear fallout you bet okay it's going to be very difficult to drink clean water and make it through the tribulation period this is why we are removed at this point okay so great dream you shared right there jill so what do you guys think about these dreams please comment and don't forget to hit that subscribe button on the way out so you don't miss any new content that we have coming out and may god bless you all and hang in there for we are almost finished amen amen and friends don't forget to request your free after the rapture survival info flash drive today free flash drive free shipping our gift to you on this flash drive there are seven gigabytes of information that will be very helpful to all your friends and family who will be left behind starting with the king james bible children's bible plus 80 bibles in other languages that are the most common after english on this flash drive are also ebooks letters sermons videos news articles articles written by believers explaining why mass amounts of people have disappeared and what's next and much much more there's even a section called abc salvation which is a quick introduction that people can read where they can quickly learn about who jesus christ really is and a condensed version of the good news of the gospel that was achieved by his finished works at the cross and how they can be saved through him and him alone these letters are also provided in 80 different languages most popular after english all this and much more is available on this flash drive that we could send to you for free just email us your request and that information is in the description box below or just go to our website edvforme.org and download the entire thing for free they are separated into four easy downloadable folders you can download and save to any device. Copy and paste this information to your friends and family's computers and devices. Put them on other flash drives and hand them out. This is an excellent way to get the information out to everybody we know so that way they are prepared if they are left behind. Information about this is all in the description box below.